There's a character called Bruno Excellente that's a sex offender. And that's it. Well, is he supposed to be a hero? Because that's kind of a hard guy to root for. Oh, Bueno Excelente. Yeah, I'll look him up. Is it DC? Bueno Excelente was a perverted sex offender whose skills earned him a place on the hero team, Section 8. This is real? I mean, it, this would probably be my least favorite member of the team. I don't know a whole lot about him, but I find it hard to root for a sex offender. His only ability is Intimidation. His only heroic ability is to scare people with the threat and act of sexual assault. And he's part of the... Oh, heroes. Uh, okay, it's not exactly a hero team. Okay. So he's part of a team of villains, then. What a character. He only ever spoke the words bueno and excelente. It is implied that Kyle Rayner was once drugged and sexually assaulted by bueno excelente. Man, it's such a shame they retired such a classic character in 2000. There's a Batman comic where Batman abuses his newly adopted son because he misinterprets what his PC says. Thinks it says son, but instead it was son, S-U-N. Man, what in tarnation? Andrew talked about that one, did he? I don't recall. Andrew knows a lot about like the wacky lore of some of this dog shit. But, like, all of it starts to blend together. Comics sound like they're in a pretty cool spot. Who's Dog Welder? I don't know. I'll look him up. Dog Welder. New Earth. He was a member of Section 8, which we just learned also had the uh, convicted sex offender whose ability is intimidation and sexual assault. So this is a team of superstars. Dog Welder spent his time trapping and killing dogs in alleyways. Abilities. Dog Welding. Sometimes called mechanical construction. Okay. He has a strong compulsion to weld dogs to people's faces. Damn, and to think he also retired in 2000. What a sad year for DC Comics when they retired Bueno Excelente and Dog Welder. Like I said, I was never a huge comic reader by any means. And now it's in such a weird state. Oh my god, there's a Dog Welder too. The second dog welder was similar to the first one. Oh, this guy's got, like, actual lore. One day in an antique store, he was possessed by the original dog welder's welding equipment, becoming the current dog welder. His wife and family wanted to help him. However, he was too compelled to weld dogs to people and welded the family dog to his children. <laughs> this, this, guy's, this guy's a menace. As a result, his wife divorced him. Oh. And remarried a year later. Let's go. Dog welder secretly watches his family. For How do you remarry that? He welded the family dog to his children. His wife's like, eh. I can fix him, I guess. He watches his family from afar. Shows a desire to speak with him, but decides to leave instead. While in Gotham, he encounters Constantine. Who reveals to dog welder that he can communicate vocally by using dead dogs as puppets. Later, Dog Welder attempts to reconcile with his family. However, his children are still very traumatized by their last encounter with him. His ex-wife, seeking to defend her kids, threatens him with a knife and urges him to leave. Realizing he is frightening the kids, he decides to leave with Section 8 and they head to the Pyramids of Egypt. There, Dog Welder learns the truth of his power. Bro, what power? He has welding equipment, kills a dog, and tries to weld it to a person. That's not a power. Like that, you have all the powers of a man and modern welding equipment. While they are attacked by mummies, Dog Welder lights his torch and is immediately transported to the Dog Welder Afterlife. What does that consist? What does that even consist of? Paradise, I guess. Wow. Here he encounters the previous Dog Welder and learn their origin. The power of the Dog Welders is derived from a curse created by Anubis. After their conversation is concluded, Dog Welder returns to his friends. Man, that, that Anubis is always up to no good. I've, I've said it since I was a kid. You can't trust him. Back in Gotham, they learn that stars Sirius A and B are expanding. When they touch, they will explode and destroy Earth. Dog Welder has an epiphany that he is meant to weld the stars together. As, <laughs> as Sirius is the dog star... Are these written like, like, are these supposed to be jokes or is it like serious? Are these like actual stories? Like, do they take themselves seriously? I can't, I cannot fucking tell. I don't know. 
I'm getting mixed reviews. It's supposed to be serious, 100% serious, and the comic series is a joke. I can't tell. Most people are saying serious. It's obviously not very serious. See, like, that's what I would normally say, but Reverse Flash is supposed to be, like, a serious villain, and some of his crimes, while some are heinous, some of his other ones are he trips Barry when he's a kid. He pushed Barry down the stairs when he was a kid once. And that's, like, a serious villain. Like, that's one of their, like, big villains. Constantine reveals that Dog Welder has a lot of untapped power. As a result, he may be able to fix Sirius. Section 8 then knock out some NASA astronauts, steal their suits, and hijack a space shuttle. When they arrive in the Sirius star system, Dog Welder leaves the ship and harnesses the power of all previous Dog Welders. He's able to weld Sirius A and B together, stabilizing them. He says goodbye to his friends, knowing that the stars will expand, killing him. Though he was content, as this would prevent the curse from afflicting other people. Section 8 returned to Noonan's, where they all mourn the loss of Dog Welder, whose world-saving sacrifice will never be known to the public. Fuck me. I'm a Dog Welder fan. I need, I, I need to see these, like, comic panels. Damn, he is not very popular. This is a whole video on the uh, Section 8, the one with Bueno Excelente, the sex offender. And Dog Welder. Who else is part of Section 8? Here's one guy whose spit tastes really bad, so he spits in people's mouths. Team Leaders, Six Pack. Sydney. Okay, so this is definitely a joke series. It, it Clearly. Okay. I see. So it's not supposed to be taken, like, in earnest. Flim Jim? Oh my god, this guy actually just spits. Holy shit. I just tried to think of the most useless power and I fucking nailed it. Wow. Wow. Well, I feel real good right now. I was I, I was a little off though. I thought he would just spit on people and it tastes bad, but it looks like his is kind of like acidic. Friendly fire. Wait, this guy might actually have a power. He accidentally shot off his own head while also fatally injuring the defenestrator. So he has energy projection but can't aim. Jean de Baton Baton. Alright, pretty cool, pretty cool. So he throws a baton. And then last one is Shake. Alright. Well, I'd say the Section 8 squad is probably up there with the Justice League. They've got all the heavy hitters here. I'm guessing they they didn't perform super well, considering their run only lasted like 20 issues. But I you know I think we're overdue for the reboot. This was created by the guy that made the boys. Oh no fucking way! Wait what? Uh oh, Garth Ennis. You're right. Holy shit! Yeah, he he's the guy that made the boys. Wow. Okay. I don't know why they don't credit the boys here. I'm guessing this is just uh, DC-related properties because we're on the DC fandom. But yeah, Garth made the boys. Also, the boys is a fucking terrible comic. Like, it's not a very good comic, but it's a great premise. The show did such a great job adapting it. Yeah, it's just shock for the sake of shock in a lot of places. Wow, I think there might actually be a real chance that they at some point try Section 8. With the success of the boys, they really might. And I think it could. I think it could slap. I, they'd have to tone down Bueno Excelente, I think, though. I don't think having a uh, sympathetic sexual assaulter would go over super well. But aside from that, I think everyone else would probably see moderate success. <laughs> bueno Excelente is the soul of the team. <laughs> yeah, true. He's really... I mean, at the end of the day, it's only him and Six Pack that survived the mini-angled ones. Whatever that means. So the world is left with just the alcoholic and the guy who rapes people. So he, he is one of the stronger members. But Dog Welder is the one that saves the world by welding stars together instead of dogs. By the way, apparently James Gunn actually considered Dog Welder for the Suicide Squad and there was even a fan petition to include him. They should have. He could have just been one of those people that die like immediately on the beach. Six Pack fixed his life after going to Alcoholics Anonymous, but then Superman ruined his life again for no reason. <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to read this. I tried to read a little of The Boys, but I guess that's a bad example because it is just like actually a bad series. Like the comic series is trash. Yeah, I hear a lot of great things about Invincible. I haven't read it though. 
But basically what we, like, I just think a lot of comics just aren't super fun to read. Which is why, for God Slap, we've been focusing on making it so even if you hate reading, you'll at least enjoy God Slap. Or at least that's the goal. 